I thought I'd continue today building on last week's talk. And we talked very pure science of mind. We talked about who God was and who we are. What is this thing we call God? Not an anthropomorphic being, but rather that we are individualizations of it. We're microcosms of the macrocosm. And as such, our thoughts create. So today I wanted to explore the idea. So what is our role in the creative process? Our role, before we can even go into our role, we must first realize that the creative power of the universe works through us. It's not happening to us, it's working through us. And how does that happen? It works through us because as we think, we attract an energy, a vibration that bursts into our experience that which we think about. But it's more than thought. It's actually what we believe. It's our thoughts, our words, our actions, and our feelings that are aligned toward a specific result, held persistently and consistently, whether it's unconsciously or consciously, that becomes our experience. That's the law. That's the creative power working through us. So we are never victims, but rather we are attractors to that which is like us, or we repel that which is not like us. So understanding that that creative power works through us, that we are the conduit through which it works through, and we have the ability to control what happens as it works through us. Secondly, understanding that it works through us, we now must understand how this creative power works. And I, I briefly touched on it, but I'm going to come back to it right now. The power works is that our thoughts combined with our words, which are extensions of our thoughts, combined with our actions, which are extensions of our thoughts and words, combined with our feelings, which are aligned with our thoughts, words, and actions. And our feelings are those things that we put behind them. And when we're inspired to do something, they're feelings of great joy, anticipation, excitement. And when that emotional juice combines with that, the creative power says, yes. But if we're putting this out there and we don't have all four of those ingredients there, the creative power, zzz, it dials down. It doesn't nearly work as fast or it doesn't work at all. So we must understand the power is working through us and, that it, and understand how it works through us, through our beliefs. Through our beliefs. And third, we must use this power in a deliberate way. Why? To prove to ourselves that it works. You see, we can't realize if it's really a power or it's a wishful thinking until we test this power and we prove to ourselves that it works. Here's the key. You may start off proving yourself something. A lot of people get into new thought and they say, I'm going to demonstrate a perfect parking place. Well, that's great. You demonstrate it. Then what are you going to do to demonstrate it at a higher level, then a higher level, then a higher level? And what I find is the more I understand how this power works, the greater I get to use this power to create. And for a long time, I used this power to create physical things, you know, cars, jobs, situations, relationships, things of that nature. Now I'm creating, I'm using it to create states of being, being in peace, creating a healthy body, creating an abundant consciousness. And I keep testing this power over and over because that's what life is. Life is constantly changing and life is giving us more opportunities to test this in all areas of life. To think that you're ever going to master an area of life is just no, because life is infinite. There's always going to be more. There's already, always going to be more to test the creative power within us. To the very moment we take our last breath, we're going to have the ability to test that power. See, and to demonstrate in any area of life, we must create a clear image of what we want. So we must create that clear image, and then we must hold that image. Not only hold it, but we must hold it in all of our activities and never let a contrary thought come to our mind. In other words, we must maintain focus. 
Um, yesterday, Gene and I were watching this video of um, Danica, the uh, race, tar- race car driver. She was there and she was interviewing Dr. Joe Dispenza. And it was fascinating to watch the interview because Danica never took her focus off of Joe. Her eyes were glued to him. She was listening to every word. And what I noticed is Joe would look at her, but then Joe would go off to the side. He would be doing this. He'd be focusing on it. He'd be doing other things. But Danica didn't didn't deviate. And it really came to me that as a race car driver, she had to hone her instinct on focus. She had to hold her focus on that car and its response as she went around that racetrack and the cars that were in her vision and where they were. That is a perfect idea of how we have to learn to focus. When we create that image of a relationship that we want, we've got to hold that image and not look off and pick and go into the daisy world off to the side, but rather we keep our vision on that. Not only do we keep it when we're thinking about relationship, we keep it in every activity of our life. Every activity of our life. One of the things that I try to keep, the image I have for myself is wherever I am, I am a beacon of light. I'm a beacon of possibility. And it was funny, Gene and I went out on um, Friday night and we went to Nebraska Furniture Mart and we were looking at a new mattress. And we went through the whole process. We went through the whole process. We tried the, we tried the Casper, we tried all of the Caspers. Prior to that, I had tried all of the purples. And then I said, let's, well, you know, maybe I'm limiting here. So Nebraska Furniture Mart has tons of mattresses. So we tried a ton of them. And we found this one, it was an Omaha plush. And we laid on it, and both of us immediately said this was the one. It was a a complete agreement on that. But we had to wait. And I put out that I put out, we're gonna attract the perfect salesperson. And there were a bunch of salespeople running around, and you could tell they weren't like that. All of a sudden, this one woman came up. I believe her name was Dee. And Dee came up and she started talking and she started sharing with us. She started answering our questions. And it was fun to be with her. And I was being fun. And she opened up and I said, you know, you've got an accent. What's that accent from? What's your ethnicity? And she said, Polish. I said, oh my God, I'm half Polish. She says, I know your last name's Volok. And she said it in a Polish way. And we just started talking. She was talking about her daughter and, and things like that. And she was doing this. And she says, you are like the most upbeat person in the world. And I said, I'm just like this. This is what life is. Life is to be excited about. Well, we concluded the transaction. And Jean and I were walking away. And I realized, wait, wait, wait. We didn't find out if they were going to, we had to take the pillows with us that we bought. Or were they going to be delivered with the mattress? So I went back and Dee says, oh, thank God you came back. I really wanted to talk to you. I said, what about the pillows? She said, they'll be delivered. And she goes, do you have a card? I said, well, sure, I have a card. She says, I would like it because I've not met anyone that was as clear and upbeat in times like this as you. Maybe you can help me and maybe my daughter might hear your message. And I just smiled and my wife smiled because that's the key. You've got to be the person you want to be all the time, no matter where you are and what you're doing. It's not about being Lee the minister while I'm talking to you or being at Agape. It's Lee being that man every moment of the day and being authentic and being that person. You see, we and we alone are responsible for our thoughts, words, actions, and feelings. This is our responsibility if we want to be conscious creators. Because if we're not conscious creators, we become victims of average experience. And that's what happens. If you're not putting out a conscious image of what you want and what you're seeking, you're just going to have whatever the average, whatever the tendency is, of the environment in which you live will be your experience. So if you're living in Frisco, Texas, and you're not conscious, you're going to have the average experience of the people in Frisco, Texas. 
Probably going to have the average experience of the family you were brought up in. Probably have an average experience of the United States. The only way you can, ex you can escape having an average life where you have no control over what's happening. What's an average? Well, statistics say 30% of the people in the United States will have heart attacks. That's how they'll die. 28% are going to have cancer. That's an average experience. But you see, you don't have to be an average. You can be the one who's a part of it, but you can be the one who doesn't get cancer, that doesn't get heart disease, that when you're 124 years old, you close your eyes, you smile, you give thanks for your life, and you gently transcend into the next world. That's a possibility, but is that the vision you hold? Or do you hold a vision that death is going to be hard? Death is going to be painful. Death is going to be miserable. It's up to us to create that image. And here's a key I want to share with you. Only you, only you can create it. Nobody else. So don't go relying on anyone else to help you. You can have people that support you, but you got to create the vision. You've got to create the image, and you're the one responsible for your thoughts, words, actions, and feelings to be held in alignment with it until it becomes an unconscious pattern that's always there for you. Ernest Holmes said this, No living soul can demonstrate two things at the same time if one contradicts the other. Really embody what that's saying. You can't be thinking two different things that are contradictory and generate anything new. It's not going to happen. You have to put out a single focus. And the demonstration will start once you get 51% of your attention. 51% of your focus is on a specific thing. The demonstration starts to happen. The greater the percentage, the greater and quicker the demonstration takes place. He, he went on and said this. And I say these words all the time, but I'm giving them to you so that you can hear it from another person, another teacher, so maybe they sink in. And Ernest said this, see, hear, talk about, and read only what you wish. Never again let a negative, contrary thought come into your mind. That's the key. You create the image, you hold the image, you turn away from anything other than the image you desire, no matter what the situation, and you believe with the core of all that you are that it's yours. One of my best affirmations is this, I'm a conscious and powerful creator, and I live in positive expectation. Think about that. I'm a powerful and conscious creator, and I live in positive expectation. I invite you to consider that as an affirmation for you for this week. Because your job, no matter where you are in life, financially, in relationships, with your health, with your spirituality, with your career, is to create that clear image and then to speak it, think it, hear it, study it, feel it, act upon it, and anything that's not like it, let it go. Anyone who's contrary to that, let them go. They're not part of what's going to create your dream life. Let me say this, you are worthy of so much more than you've yet to realize. So I know you're going to have a great week because I believe that if you're ready, you will start this creative process this week or you will continue it to an even higher level. I want to thank you for joining us today. I'm so grateful that you took your time to watch or listen to this message. If you found this message beneficial, I would ask that you go to our website, agapecsl.com. Once there, Click on the Donate button and experience the joy of conscious and purposeful giving. Or if you would like, text your gift by simply dialing 
6976. It is through your gifts that we are able to bring this message to you in the world. I would ask that if you like this message, to please subscribe to my YouTube channel under my name, Lee Wallach. Again, I want to thank you for joining me in the Gopi community as we learn how to better self-love through conscious living.